Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you may be watching me on whatever venue you may be watching this video. I'm so glad that you have taken the time to join me. As I share with you about Satan and his use of music, if you are a parent and you have uh, children, particularly teenage children, you need to listen very carefully to what I want to say to you because this is very, very important. Satan has, for many years, used music to influence the behavior and the thinking of young people. Um, I'm going to show you that from the Word of God. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that from uh, past decades of what has been done in the music ministry, in the music uh, industry. Uh, let's start reading first of all with Ezekiel 28. It says in verse 12, now, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 tell us about uh, Lucifer, about when he was first in heaven, and why he was kicked out, and it gives us insight onto uh, what he was doing prior to becoming Satan. As the Son of Man, take up lamentation for the King of Tyre, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, You are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Now this is not the Eden on this earth, this is Eden up in heaven. Uh, every precious stone was your coverings, sardius, topaz, diamond, <clears throat> beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your tim timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created. So when God created Lucifer, he created him with instruments that were built into his, his very uh, being. He said, you are the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you. You are on the mount, holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you, you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you out as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Now, when God says here that he destroyed him, didn't mean that he annihilated him, that he, he you know, that Satan no longer exists. He destroyed him in the, in the sense of when he was kicked out of, out of the God's uh, holy mountain, he fell down onto the earth. Like like uh, Jesus, said, he, I saw Satan fall like lightning. It was the fire that consumed him, okay, and turned him into an ugly devil. And God humbled him uh, before our creation that was here, the pre-Adamic creation. Now, if you never heard of any of my teaching along those lines, I suggest that you go to our website www.etm.org, click on resources and sermons, and there that'll take you to our YouTube channel. And scroll down and you'll find a teaching there on the pre-Adamic creation where I go into detail about the creation that was on this earth millions and millions of years ago, a time where there were prehistoric animals and there was another creation down here, and how Lucifer was connected to that creation. All right, uh, so if you want more information on it, uh, you'll, you'll see it. Thank you, Jonathan. Good to see you. It says... Um, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. And I cast you down to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze at you. So notice that there were kings down here. Okay. Uh, this is the pre-Adamic creation. Uh, and uh, God humbled him because uh, he exalted himself and tried to overthrow God. And God humbled him. You defiled your sanctuaries. I want you to notice there were sanctuaries here. By the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading, therefore I brought fire from your midst, and it devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. So all the, the, the kings and the people that were here on this earth, the pre-Adamic creation, saw when he was kicked down to the earth. Because this was his domain. There were sanctuaries here, and his job was to lead these people and worship with music unto God. Amen. But... You know, he, 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 he got caught up in pride. He started looking at himself, how beautiful he was, and how privileged he was to walk in the fire of the mountain of God, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, God said, all right, I'm going to kick you out, <clears throat> and kick them out of God's holy mountain. And he came down burning. That's why Jesus said in Luke 10, 18, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Well, he was consumed with this fire. By the time he hit the ground here on earth, he, he, was, he was no longer this beautiful angel. He was an ugly devil. However, the Bible says the gifts of the calling of God are without the repentance. So he still held on to the wisdom that he had regarding music, except now he's perverted it. All right? He's perverted it. There, there's a, there, the anointing that he had was still with him, but it, it's perverted. It's used for evil, not for good. Before it was used for good, to lead worship to God. Now he uses it 
to uh, get a hold of human beings. Uh, music makes people act a certain way. You know, back in the days of Elvis Presley, uh, w women would, would, would go crazy. I mean, they'd take their bras off, their panties off, and throw them up on the stage. Same thing with the Beatles, amen. Well, there was something on them, amen, that, 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 that moved uh, these people to behave a certain way. Uh, you know, later on when heavy metal came and there was these groups that to me it wasn't even music It was just a lot of a lot of noise and jumping around and just people acting crazy and weird on stage and yet uh, The people in these concerts these young people would go bizarre. I mean bizarre It would be bananas with the uh, how they would behave why because that music moved them to act a certain way today, you know, it's the devil is using music to pervert the minds of uh, of young people, particularly with this rap music, where they sing about murdering people, killing cops, you know, uh, all kinds of sexual innuendos. Uh, their their minds are being perverted uh, through through music because Satan has always used it. Back in the in the seventies and eighties, there was something called back masking. Now, for those of you that are, are not that old, you may not remember. You you, you wouldn't remember. You wouldn't know about this. But ma back masking is simply. The encoding of audio messages, uh, such as words conveyed, uh, I have a hard time reading my own handwriting sometimes, conveying a secret message when the record is played backwards. Uh, and, a, and a number of groups used it, and some of them were, were, were satanic messages. Uh, I'll just give you an example of some. Uh, Judas Priest uh, had bat, bat, bat masked. Uh, and the messengers do it. Queen uh, uh, did it, and it says, start to smoke marijuana. That was the back mass, uh, the message uh, back then. Electric Light Orchestra, Fire on High was the message that was back masking. Um, Slayer uh, also did it. And the Beatles uh, did it. It says, turn me on, dead man. Uh, Slayer had the, the, the back mask and it said, Hell Awaits. And there were others. And there were groups that, uh, uh, I, I, I don't recall all their names, but some of them uh, actually went to the Satanic Church and they, they, they got them to bless their record and put a Satanic symbol on the album cover so that they can sell records. Uh, this is all uh, facts. You can look this up online. I lived through that era, so I remember all of that. Um, and stuff. So we see how Satan uses music to pervert the minds of people. So if you are a parent, okay, and your kids are not of uh, adults yet, uh, they live in your home. You need to you need to monitor what they're wa what you're listening to, because Satan is trying to get inside inside their minds and inside their spirit through this avenue of music. Again, verse 18 here he says, "You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities." By the iniquity of your trading, therefore I brought fire from your midst, it devoured you, and I turned to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you, and you became a, a horror, and you shall be no more forever. So God turned him into a horror. He was this beautiful angel with all these precious stones, with, with all these instruments, and God burned them all the way from heaven to the ground and humbled them before the kings and the people, the creation that was here, which Lucifer was reigning over. This is his his his, uh, his throne down here, but it was it was the throne, it was his 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 domain, but under God. I mean, the moment he tried to usurp God's authority, he was kicked out. Ezekiel fourteen brings out a little more about that. And like I said, if you go on my website www.etm.org, I have that teaching the pre creation the uh, pre Adamic creation. I believe it's both in English and Spanish. Uh, that you can watch. You just go to where it says resources, click on sermons, you'll go into our YouTube channel and scroll. And by the way, I would encourage you to submit to our YouTube channel because we're always, we have probably about now 100 and something videos on there in English and Spanish. We're all, always putting more on there. If you subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything, it's free. We're not going to hit you for money. Uh, you just subscribe. And what happens is that every time that we put a video on there, you'll get a notification automatically that there's a new video on there. And it's a way that you can stay informed of, of uh, the teachings that we're putting out. Now, uh, Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground. 
you who weaken the nations. So again, we see that there were nations here. Okay, for you have this. This is the pre-Adamic creation. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You shall be brought down to Shul, to the lowest depths of the pit. Shul is, is hell. Okay, Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms? That's what he did after he was cast down here. He, 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 he perverted uh, the creation that was here. And he shook the kingdoms. There were kingdoms here. Who, who made the world as a wilderness. He made this world as a wilderness, and eventually God destroyed it with a flood. This was not the Noah's flood. This was the first flood. That's the reason that when you when you study Genesis 1, Genesis 1 reveals to us two things. One, how God created the earth originally, but through the law of double reference, which is a biblical principle, God is also revealing to us how he had to, uh, <clears throat> you know, fix uh, what happened uh, after he destroyed it with a flood. Between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, something happened. That was the fall of Lucifer. And and, uh, and and the perversion, and we, we, between those verses, we don't know exactly how many millions of years passed uh, pass by. And so he perverted this whole world down here that with this pre adamic creation. It was so bad that God had to destroy it. And he created a flood, and the waters from the earth touched the heavens. That's how high the flood was. That's why he had to separate the waters from the earth and the waters in the firmament, or the clouds. He had to separate them when he was uh, revamping or uh, re redoing uh, the, the earth as a result of the first flood. Now it says, uh, uh, verse 3, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities. So there were cities here. Who did not open the house of his, of his prisoners. So, uh, w again, we, we see that Satan was the anointed cherub. He had instruments. He, uh, he used music at first for good uh, in the sanctuaries to, to lead worship unto God. Uh, when he got caught up in pride, God had to humble him and cast him down from his holy mountain. Now, he still had limited access to heaven. We see that in the book of Job when he, he presents himself before God uh, with the sons of God, which are the angels. And God asks, where have you come from, uh, Satan? And he says, from walking to and fro the earth. So he still had limited access. He couldn't go to the Holy Mountain of God where the fire stones were anymore because he was kicked out of there. But he still had limited access to heaven. That's why in the, the book of Revelation, in the 12th chapter, we see that he is kicked out of heaven the second time now because the blood of Jesus was taken up into heaven. It says in verse 7 of Revelation 12, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So now they, now they have no place in heaven. Now they're, they're uh, kicked out for good. Prior to that, they had limited access. And we see that in the book of Job. Then it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused him before our God day and night has been cast down. Why was he cast out? Because now the blood of Jesus Christ was taken up into heaven and cleansed the heavenly things, and now Satan could no longer enter enter heaven. Now he is, in, he is enclosed. This, this is a prison for Satan down here until his day of judgment. This is a prison. He can't go beyond the atmospheric heavens. You know, uh, years ago, uh, probably unless you're my age, you don't remember these things, but in the 60s, they used to send up astronauts up in capsules uh, before they went to the moon, they just go around the Earth um, in orbit. But then they eventually landed on the moon. But whenever they came back, they 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 came back. And they parachuted into the ocean. A, a Navy ship would pick them up, and they were quarantined. I forget. I think it was 30 days or so. They were quarantined. Why? Why did they do that? Because they they wanted to make sure they didn't have some illness that they found up there and bring it back. Well. Today they don't do that anymore because they have found out that there there are no germs, there are no and and, and the, the the starry heavens, all the germs and all that stuff is down here where Satan is enclosed, amen, in this atmospheric heaven. He can't go beyond the atmospheric heaven. Okay, he's the prince of the power of the air. This is about as far as he goes. Uh, that's why there 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 are windows uh, in heaven 
that at the open we see angels coming up and down because Satan is enclosed down here until his day of judgment. All right. So, but when the blood of Jesus Christ was taken up into heaven, he could no longer go up there. And it says again, verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ have come. When Jesus brought salvation to mankind, after he ascended, he, went, he took his blood up to heaven. For the accusers of my brethren who accused him before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and did then not love their lives to the death. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Why, why are heavens rejoicing? They don't have to put up with the devil anymore. They don't have to be, hear him and, and talking all the trash that he talked about in these meetings. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to him having great wrath because he knows his time is short. Well, why does he know his time is short? Because the blood of Jesus Christ was taken up into heaven. Because Jesus offered up a sacrifice. Because he was defeated by Jesus in, <clears throat> in hell when God raised Jesus up from the dead, spiritually first and then physically. And Jesus <clears throat> made a show of him open and triumphing over him in hell before all his cohorts. And he took the keys of hell and grave and rose up victorious. So he knows his time is short. Amen. But he still has the anointing that he had. He still has his, his, his knowledge of music and how it affects people. And that's why you have to be very careful, particularly if you are a parent, about the kind of music that you are allowing your children to listen to. Amen. Because it will affect their behavior. As I've, I've noted uh, in some of these... Uh, you know, these heavy metal uh, music and, and some of the other music. A friend of mine was showing me a video. Uh, John Gaynor was showing me a video. He's very involved in music and so forth. And he showed me this video about this new music that they got now. It's perverted, totally perverted. And that's what Satan's using as a tool to reach young people. All right? Well, I hope this has been helpful to you. We always enjoy your comments. Thank you for your prayers. And have a great, wonderful day.